listen up. This book deserves as much hype as better than the movies. Let that sit in. Hello everyone, my name's Emily. You might also know me as Dietitian EMK on all social media platforms. Today we will be reviewing I Hope This Doesn't Find You by Anne Leung. This is a spoiler. This review will contain spoilers, disclaimer. Disclaimer. This review will include spoilers, incredibly dramatic reactions, and strong opinionated opinions. If you haven't read this book or want to read it, add this to your save later playlist so you can watch this after. If you want to just hang out, vibe, do you only really care about the spoilers? Or if you have read anyone of Bond, let's begin. The kind of general premise of the book is we follow our main character, Sadie. She is your like classic academic weapon, top of the class in everything, sports, academics. Like there's like school captains, which kind of gives off like head girl, head boy vibes from Harry Potter. And essentially you find out that she's pushing herself so much because of her family history. She just wants to make sure her family's comfortable. Her father had previously left the family and she takes a lot of the blame. And then she just kind of is like someone who's like constantly trying to be a mediator, trying to find the peace trying to help everyone else and essentially putting herself last. So for our overly academic, burnt out, people pleasing girlies, this is for you. And our love interest, the male main character, Julius, he's kind of Sadie's rival in all of this. And he's the main one she's competing with throughout the entire book, academics, sports, literally everything. She's like, I must beat him. We're gonna kind of go through the entire story kind of go through the plot there are a couple quotes that i did mark that i would love to bring up that are just like so so cute and then we'll kind of talk about the characters overall and their development we'll talk about the book cover and what i think of that and then final thoughts so come along for a ride grab a snack i'm so excited you're here we're first starting off with sadie is waiting to provide a tour to these like potential students but it's their parents who are coming instead i know Anne liang is an asian author so she knows the culture but just like seeing like starting off with the cultural incorporation this is my first book of hers i've also read i will know of the term like auntie i was like yes representation okay but anyway that's here no there that was just me being like yes so essentially like her and julius were asked to give tours to these parents that were coming for prospective students and it's like already a competition in sadie's mind she's like i have to give a better tour i have to get them to like me better than him and it's just very clear right off the bat that like they're swoon the aunties are swooning over him. They're like, wow, if kids like you are at this school, I'm gonna invite my kid. And then this one moment happens where we're gonna just bring it up earlier. I don't know how to speak Mandarin, so I'm just gonna include the quote. Sadie trying to kind of goes out of her way to like speak Mandarin to them to appear more like accepting. And they respond, the first auntie responds right away in an American accent and just goes into English. But then they go through the tour, they kind of split up. Julius takes two of the aunties, Sadie took, takes two of the aunties. And then when Julius is saying bye to them, one of the aunties filled me with so much rage, spoke in Mandarin to him when it was the same one that previously had spoken English to Sadie when she tried to make speak to her in Mandarin and be a little bit more like inclusive. And right off the bat, I was enraged. I was like, what do you have? What do you actually have? Sadie's out here, neither here nor there. We'll continue on. So then we kind of learn a little bit more about Sadie. Like I said, we know that a lot of what drives her is for her family's happiness and to kind of like help them be at peace. 
And she talks about how one of her biggest dreams is for Max to find a job after going to like a sports university, even though that's maybe not his dream, but trying to be a little bit realistic because he's really into basketball and whatnot. And I would have wanted to know at this point, I was like, this is giving off eldest daughter vibes. Like the trying to parent the siblings, the trying to make sure everyone's happy, the trying to be best at academics, sports. It just screams eldest daughter to me at this point. I will know. As an eldest daughter, I was like, wow. Interesting. <laughs> and then we kind of get a little bit more backstory about Sadie, about like how her father left when she was young and how she's going out so much of her way to make sure that like her mom is happy, her brother is happy, just so they'll start like to smile again and be happy. Oh, this just screams eldest daughter to me. So then we get a little bit more information to kind of like what Sadie's relationships with her classmates look like. I thought they're at like this very prestigious school that's like hard to get into, I think. But then like one of her first interactions is this girl coming up to her and basically being like, yeah, can you like give me all of your notes? And can you also color coordinate them? They make sense for the exam. And then Sadie being who she is and wanting to just make sure everyone's happy is like totally, and I'm like, oh no. So this is where the people pleasing comes in. And I was like, Sadie. Oh. So at this point I'm like, yes, we're gonna, we're gonna need some good character development where she stands up for herself. Please, please. Oh my gosh, and then one of her next interactions, we find out with her, one of her, a couple of her classmates is, it was like a group project, and I bring this up specifically because group projects are the bane in my existence. And essentially, neither of them did any of their end of the work, even though like Sadie basically wrote it out for them. And she now is like frantically doing it for them instead and she's essentially like in her head she's like okay next time i'm gonna just do it myself and i know this is her like she's very competitive with her grades she wants to be the best but also as someone who like this this is in high school this story is based like they're seniors in high school you'd think as people get older you you'd think as keyword being think 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 as people get older, like, we're a little bit more mature, hopefully a little bit more competent, and group projects and collaborating would be a little bit easier. No. In college, I was in too many group projects, and they were the literal bane of my existence. I'm not talking partner projects. It was my friend Hannah. You guys all know. We always were, like, partners together, but... When it came to group projects, especially when it was randomized, oh my gosh. I don't miss those days. And I truly like stand behind Sadie me like, fine, I'll do it myself. Because yeah, people are unreliable. So then we kind of kind of get a little bit more of a peek into her Sadie's rivalry with Julius. So at the beginning, you're kind of like, okay, why are they like duking it out over a school tour? But then he emails her, or we read an email together, when they're going over, like she just got praised by a teacher because of the topic they chose for the group project. And Julius emails her, just so you know, Miss Rachel took a peek at our group project earlier and said it looked, and I quote, phenomenal. I'm saying this now so you're not too shocked when our grades come back and mine's higher than yours. I know how upset you get every time I win. Best regards, Julius Gong, school captain. The audacity of this guy. I'm just, we're 35 pages in and I'm like, I'm ready to go to war with Sadie against this guy. And Sadie ends up stepping away for whatever reason, and she comes back. This is a very key part. This is a very key, key part of the plot, is Sadie's coping mechanism for like being calm and nice to everyone and 
maintaining the peace is she writes these email drafts to people that are essentially her true feelings. Something interesting to me in these email drafts is she replies to the people. It's not like an empty email draft. It's like a reply slash reply all email draft where you could see where this is going. You could see where this is going. Sadie steps away for a minute and then she walks back and she notices that the screen is no longer, her laptop screen is no longer in the position she left it in. And it was at this moment, I'm like, the emails have been sent, but who sent the emails? And at this point, there's like two people that were my top contenders. There was Rosie, who Rosie was one of the first girls that asked Sadie for her notes for an upcoming exam. And then there's Abigail. We find out Abigail is like Sadie's best friend. They're kind of these two like misfits who don't really have a place among saw people. Abigail was like rumored to be dating someone much older than her, but it was actually her sister's boyfriend who was driving her to school. And then Sadie just is so competitive about academics and sports and everything and college that not a lot of people kind of get her. So they found each other, which is great. And at this point where honestly, I was like, I think Abigail sent the emails. Cause I was like, she was the closest one in the laptop, but that's where I was at this point. So then the emails get sent out and Sadie doesn't know they get sent out, but she's like noticing a lot more attention on her. And Abigail's like, well, you're just like the school captain and you're on top of the grades and you're top of the class and you're great sports. Like it's normal, you get attention. And we get our first confrontation. It's with Rosie. She shows Sadie the response because way back when, and like some of these email drafts go back like nine years. So they've been stored in there for a very long time. It comes out that Rosie actually copied one of Sadie's old science projects. And in order to deal with those emotions, Sadie wrote her a very scathing email essentially. And then we get the classic, which we've all been waiting for. I think like two thirds of her like 75 of Sadie's 75 emails were to Julius and he confronts her and he's very upset and angry. And the thing is, it's not like there was a reply to just the person. For some reason, all these are set up as like, reply to the entire class and some faculty. I'm just wondering how, from my perspective, one, if we're gonna vent our feelings through emails, why are we, if it's like one email from one person, why is everyone else getting included in there? And she sent some emails to prof or to teachers as well. So why was the class involved in that too? It was at this point where I was like, Sadie, sweetie, have you ever heard of a diary? Like I know that would be bad if someone found your diary and they did photocopies of it or they released it, took pictures, but like, but like email? If anyone's ever used Microsoft Outlook, you know we cannot trust emails. Trying to maneuver through that is so confusing. Like ridiculously confusing for how much money Microsoft has in everything. Anyhow. And then Sadie's like, okay, well how bad were my emails to Julius? And we get a couple of them. I want to quote, I just want to read one of these because I was cracking up. So essentially what led to this was Julius has sent out an email to everyone in their class offering to sell his study materials for some sum after Sadie had just offered to sell her study materials. And her response goes, sometimes I dream about throttling you. I would do it slowly. I would do it when you weren't ready, when you were relaxed. I imagine wrapping my hands around your long pale throat and watching the fear bloom in your eyes. I imagine your skin turning red, your breathing quickening as you struggle. I want to watch you in pain up close. I want you to beg me. I want you to admit you were wrong that I've won. Maybe you would even sink to your knees for me. Plead for mercy. That would be fun. Even then, that wouldn't be enough. At this point when I'm reading, 
I'm like, this sounds like a threat. She could get suspended for this. Like, this is a threat. She's threatening harm. I was like, girl, I feel you. Sadie, I feel you. But this is a threat. Oh my gosh. And then as we kind of learn more about the emails that have come up, there was one specifically with a teacher. And unfortunately, this was a teacher that really liked Sadie until these emails came out. Sadie was essentially reaching out to the teacher about a grade she got on something. And the teacher responds, your score is 89.5% sent from my iPhone. Why do teachers do this? Why do professors do this? Why? Set up an email signature on your phone. It's not challenging. Also, would it kill you to like add a greeting or a little outro, like all the best, sincerely? I don't know, rest. Sadie like goes in back and forth asking if she can round it up to a 90% and then she just responds, no, all grades are final. And then Sadie goes into this huge email that we just like, feel free to read it, but just kind of going into how this 0.5% is gonna get her denied from Berkeley, which is where her dream school is. Also, side note, my sister goes to Berkeley, that's fun. It's essentially super condescending to the teacher. So you can imagine at this point, Sadie is very stressed and I'm thinking about this. This is literally a worst nightmare. I'm someone I will confidently stand behind. If anything I say behind your back, I would feel comfortable saying your face maybe I'm a little bit blunt or mean but Sadie needs a diary she just needs a diary the email system the reply the the thing that gets me at this point we're 60 ish pages in the thing that gets me is the people in her drafts like the emails were drafted to someone like if there was no recipient she would be fine. The emails wouldn't get sent because there's no one to send to, but the fact that there were recipients, it makes me a little bit stressed to think about. And then we get to one point where Sadie is venting to Abigail about everything that's happened. And Sadie essentially like, I don't understand how this happened. And Abigail goes, well, I dot, dot, dot. And it was at this point where I was like, it was Abigail. Why would she do this though? And that's the mystery. But at this point I was like, my money is on Abigail. So then we return to Sadie's home life a little bit more. We find out that her mom owns a bakery. Sadie helps out a lot there. Max, her brother, kind of helps out a little bit. Sadie frequently stays up past 1 a.m. doing homework, helping out her family, making sure they're all happy. And then Sadie, I just want to mention this one point where it's so cute that she's helping out all these people around her. like people that are working multiple jobs to feed their children, someone who's living alone because their partner passed away, divorcees, and then she's just like looking out for all these people. So it really shows just like, Sadie's very considerate, she wants everyone happy. This definitely plays a part with her childhood trauma, but we can kind of see a little bit more of the person Sadie is. So then the next day, there's a gathering uh, oh my gosh, what's the, what's the name of it? When well, there's like a big assembly. I'm like, I haven't been in high school in so long. There's a huge assembly on cyber security. And everyone knows, obviously, this is about Sadie because she sent out 75 emails that were very uh, descriptive. And essentially, her and Julius get into this like, you argument in front of everyone. And this is the first time I will take Julius' side. I don't know if it'll be the last time, but we'll say definitely the first, where they're arguing and he goes, have you ever heard of a diary, Sadie? It might be a worthy investment. And she goes, don't disgust me. I would never write diary entries about you. And he goes, and yet it's clear I'm all you ever think about. And then she goes, think about killing. These are threats, Sadie. These are threats. These are threats. Miss Ma'am. Ma 
So that just cracked me up. So then it's decided that since it, they're called later to the principal's office, which is like Sadie's worst nightmare. She's normally the only going in there because she's praised for things, but her and Julius were called there. And essentially we're setting up our fork proximity. Her and Julius are gonna have to work together because some of those aunties way from back the beginning saw a video of the two arguing during the assembly and they pulled, one of them pulled out their kids from enrollment. The others were thinking about pulling out their kids and now they have to work together to prove to the school, everyone that they can be civil with each other and appear as a united force. So we get our first task they must do together. And there's this like bike shed at the school and they are tasked with cleaning it. And it starts off with this like, like it turns into the classic like cleaning then spraying each other and then like you're drenched and wet and then there's like see-through clothing. Luckily, Julius is like having some decency and not staring at her. But then he offers her his blazer to wear because she wow. left hers and I was like, the seeds have been planted. This is the beginning of our rivals to lovers. I'm here for it. Some people, Sadie might see this as enemies to lovers. I think Sadie might need to chill a little bit with the enemies, but definite rivals, academic rivals, lovers. While they're cleaning up the shed, Sadie finds this like writing, I think calling her a bitch. Like someone wrote it and Julius like knew immediately based off the handwriting. He's like, this is horrible handwriting. This has to be this guy. Which I'm like, okay, how do you know someone's handwriting that well unless you've worked with them? But I digress. But then the next day, Sadie's walking around and she runs into the guy that Julius like essentially said that the, wrote the very mean thing about Sadie. And he has like a black eye. And at this point I'm like, it was Julius. My money's on Julius. Five dollars down on Julius. Take it or leave it. I'll quickly note, I do not encourage gambling or betting in any way. And then Sadie's like, hmm, she notices that later that day, Julius is like, knuckles are really raw and red. And she's like, what happened to your hand? And he's like, no, it's none of your business. She's like, okay, cool, cool. But at this point, there's just, there's just so much angst and Sadie is just so competitive, but we're like grasping for any little interactions we can get for them to be civil. And now we find out they're, what are their next tasks they are assigned. Is they're both part of the yearbook committee and they have to have an excerpt from like an alum. And we find out that Julius has an older brother, James, I think. And the first thing he says is, oh, I know, when she introduces herself on the phone for the interview, he goes, oh, I know you, you're the other captain, right? My little brother talks about you all the time. Does he now? Does he now? And then later, they agree to meet up. Julius is like very against doing this interview, but it's the only option they have because all the other alum were basically like, nope, I'm not doing this interview. And he tells James, Julius's brother tells her that she's practically a household name. And then Sadie's like, what does he say about me? And Julius is horrified, but everyone reading is he like, yes, tell us more. James talks about how James is always going on about how intimidatingly like, smart Sadie is and how he, hard he has to work to keep up with her. It's essentially we're like, yes. Julius thinks about her quite a bit. Quite a bit for maybe a little bit more than someone who's academic rivals with someone. But it was so funny to see Julius getting all like flushed and then Sadie's like eating this up because she's just so competitive. She's like, yes, tell me more. Tell me more about him. And the seeds are being planted. That's all we're gonna say. The plants are growing. Someday I want a quote from the interview, which was so bizarre. James is like a writer, but he also went to Harvard for law. But the start of their interview is so odd. He goes, for me, you see the words are like sparrows. 
I could spend the whole day chasing them, but they'd only startle and fly away from me. It's more important to stay still and let the sparrows come on their own. He keeps continuing this sparrow, sparrow metaphor. Now, obviously, there are days when you do have to coax the sparrows down with a bit of bird seed. Certain types of bird seed work better than others, but sometimes you think you need the premium brand. But it's in fact the organic brand, or not even a particular brand at all, only the berries you pluck in the wild that are most effective. And Sadie's like, what are the bird seeds meant to be? What are you referring to if you're looking for inspiration? And he's like, nothing. And everything. And I'm just like, Julius is rolling his eyes, I'm rolling my eyes. I'm like, what is happening in the House of Commerce? So anywho, they do the interview. We find out that Julius and his brother don't really have the best relationship. Julius was kind of top of his class. He graduated, I think, six years before them, making him 24-ish. He went to Harvard Law. He like wrote some book and then sold some excerpt of writing that like sold for seven figures before he was 20. He just incredibly successful and you can kind of see where the competitiveness with Julius is and we kind of learn a little bit more about that. Quick funny thing I want to note is Abigail. So Sadie's trying to figure out how to make everyone happy and how to make everyone forgive her for what happened with the letters. And Abigail, best friend, is like, let's host a party. Everyone loves free alcohol and a party. And they were just, Sadie was like talking about how different her and Abigail are. And I just want to mention this one quote because I, I resonate with this when they're talking about money. Sadie goes, as someone who's a strong advocate of saving up just in case a comic crashes into our house and insurance refuses to cover it, it's a bit hard for me to enjoy the elaborate bouquets of flowers and chocolate fountain Abigail's bought for this one occasion for their party. And I feel this, Sadie. I refuse to pull out of my savings account. Once the money goes in there, it's not coming back out. It's meant to be saved for when comments crash into my house and insurance won't cover it, you know? So then we get to the party and of course, I'm just waiting for Julius to show up because I love their angst and their some pining. And there's a game of truth or dare and Julius gets asked truth if he likes any girls and he says no one. Boring. And then Sadie gets asked truth or dare and she says dare and she has to kiss Julius. And this is when the ball gets rolling, which is so exciting for everyone involved. Because after this moment, well, okay. So the ball gets rolling and then it at the same time gets like cut in half by a sledgehammer because they kiss and it's like really Sadie's like oh my gosh why did I like that so much and then they get into an argument about it and he's like mad at her and he goes you would kiss someone you love just because of a childless dare just because other people want you to do their opinions really mean that much to you clearly he does not know Sadie at this point at all and then we finally get some jealousy or he's arguing. It's like, please, Julius, you're not fooling anyone. He essentially like makes a comment that, well, Sadie says like, you kissed me back. And he's like, it's a natural reflex. Not that I wanted to, but that he's like, not that I would expect you to know. And she's like, who says I wouldn't know? And he like shuts down and he's jealous. So obviously jealous. He starts probing like, who was it? He's like, it can't be anyone from school because I'd hear the rumors and he's probing. He definitely, he definitely wants to know and he tells, she tells her. But then he goes and ruins it. Julius is a little bit self-sabotaging, I will know, throughout all this. Like they have these nice moments and then he lashes out. What does this say about his character? We could look a little bit deeper into it maybe. But Sadie like, is provoking him and she's like what are you jealous that i'd kiss someone else and then he goes why would i be jealous i would rather die than kiss you again julia it's not nice that's not nice at all 
And then I think Sadie has a very reasonable reaction and kicks him in the knee. And he's like, what is wrong with you? But that's not... Okay, relax, my guy. Sadie kind of sees how destructive everyone else is. Abigail has to leave to help her sister. A common theme I will know with Abigail is like she like feels like she's really knowledgeable about relationships and pushing people into relationships and like withdrawing them when like maybe it's not gonna work out super well. But she is like, oh my gosh, my sister's having issues with the boyfriend. I'm gonna go can help her out. The party gets out of control. Sadie like is like, that's enough. Which like, you know what? I got that. If you're gonna destroy my household items, you're out. Peace out. And Julius is the one that stays behind. They share a really nice moment, kind of talking a little bit more about the family. She opens up to him about how her father left when she was really young and how she kind of looks after the family. And then Julius has some very good question. And I was like, what? And he's like, where is your brother in all of this? And he, he's like, he's the eldest in the family. Shouldn't he have stepped in? I was flabbergasted. Everything that's happening screams eldest daughter behavior to me. Is it, is it a boy thing? Is it, I don't know much about eldest brothers. Could not tell you a lot about that, what I know. But like he's the eldest and he's just messing around playing basketball. Maybe he's not messing around. He's playing basketball, not really helping out at the bakery as much. Sadie's clearly like taking on a lot of responsibility in the family. She's the youngest. I'm skeptical. So then we get a very fun moment where Sadie's like, if I can kiss Julius, I can let loose and drink alcohol. And I think she, she sees a can, she thinks it's beer, but it's bourbon and she chugs it. So she's like drunk because she doesn't drink or party or anything really. And she gets all like, close and up personal with Julius and he starts turning red and it's just so obvious at this point that he's a little crush. We all knew it, but it's so obvious at this point. It was so fun to see little tipsy Sadie confronting him. But then this part also like Sadie starts yelling turning around like yelling for Alex and I'm like who is Alex? And Julius is also like who is Alex? Like is this a random man? Or do you mean Alexa? And she's trying to ask Alexa a question, but she calls him pretty and he's like a little bit flustered. And then she mentions how much she starts like touching him and mentions how much she likes her hair. And then we find out from Julius where he mentions that she he thought she hated his hair. She goes, did I say that? And Julia says, you did in your email from the bottom of my heart. I really hope your comb breaks and you run out of whatever expensive hair products you've been using to make your hair appear deceptively soft. And I'm sure it's not because there's nothing soft about you anywhere at all. And she's like, how'd you remember all that? And he goes, I have all your emails memorized word for word. There were like at least 25, 30 emails. The boy is in love. <laughs> and then they're still having their little heart to heart moment. And she's like, why do you always single me out? Literally their rivalry started when they were like, I think in like first grade, second grade. Third grade, fourth grade. Sorry. She's like, why do you always single me out? And then Julius goes, because you're the only person worth paying attention to. This may as well be a profession of love. At this point, I'm like, Miss Sadie, I know you're tipsy, but you better be remembering what he's saying. And then of course, the mom and brother come home and they have to scatter like a bunch of rats <laughs> scuttering around. So then we're not gonna go too much into this, but like Sadie's mom's like, what are you up to? Why are you up so late? And the first thing she says is I'm not drunk. Sadie, that's not gonna fool anyone. So then we go back to school. The principal kind of has a check in with Julius and Sadie. And he's like, I just want to follow up how your united front cause is coming. Obviously, Julius is in love with Sadie. He's been professing his love. And Sadie's just still very confrontational and competitive with him. But then Sa Julia, they're like very like sarcastically laying it down. Like, oh, yeah. 
adore, I just adore them and we do get along so well. And Julius says this, he says, and Sadie is the light of my life. His lip curling, even though there's an odd note to his tone, something that could be confused for sincerity. The sun in my sky, the source of all my joy. She's the reason I wake up every morning, excited to go to my classes. Not a day goes by where I'm not grateful that she exists, that she's there, that I get to talk to her and pass her in the halls and listen to her laugh. This boy is just professing his love and our girl Sadie is so oblivious to it. <laughs> and the principal agrees. He goes, that was beautiful. <laughs> There's just so much angst, but we can't help but love them. We get to another point where they are, their final task is to figure out what their like senior trip will be which is kind of nice that they're letting like the school captains choose like students choose where to go and Sadie's team beach but then julius is like no it's too romantic which like julius you professed your love in very non-traditional settings take her to a beach but then he decides to demonstrate to Sadie why Beach is too romantic. And essentially he's risen her up, you know. And he starts like flirting with her and getting really close to her. And at this point I'm just like, get, get together, together already. already. Please. 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 <laughs> but then see we have we keep having these really cute moments and then one of them has to ruin it. So then they're like going back and forth about where to go for their senior trip. And Sadie's like, why are you making this so hard, Julius? Didn't you hear the principal? The second we finish this proposal, the torture will stop and we'll be released from each other at last. We won't even have to speak to each other ever again. And Julius goes, I know that. And he goes, let's choose this place. And it's like one of the places she recommended, like lake, some lakeside place earlier. He's like, and Sadie goes, really, that's you agree? And he goes, yeah, sure. Congratulations, Sadie, the torch is over, and he like leaves. Ah, it's just so frustrating at this point. I was like, it's so obvious. Their feelings are so obvious, but we have to read it for the angst and the back and forth and the rivalry. Hold on guys though, we can, we continue to persevere. So then Julius ends up like showing up at the bakery, like Sadie's mom's bakery. And he's like, starts bonding with Max. Well, okay, first Sadie's in a mood because ever since they decided on the senior year trip, Julius has not talked to her and clearly she misses his presence. And Max is like, when Julia shows up, he's like, are you the guy that rejected my sister and that's why she's so mopey? Yes. Yes, that is correct. But then this girl comes into the bakery and starts hitting on Julius and I'm like, finally, we have some jealousy on Sadie's side because maybe that will make her realize her feelings. The girl's hitting on him and gives him her number and everything. And he like intentionally like quote, like looks over at Sadie to make sure she's watching. Okay, you little schemer, Julius, you. And then he leaves and the brother's like, he's into you. He looked at you like 30 times. He's into you and Sadie's in denial. But then we get this moment where he, Julius forgets his phone at the bakery and she sees that like the girl that was hitting on Julius, like he already unfollowed her on, I think it was Instagram or something by that time. So she, he wasn't gonna reach out. But then she goes to return the phone and James had found Julian. There's so many J names. There's only two in the But, oh my gosh, hold on. James had found Julius based off of his search history because Julius was looking up the bakery for Sadie's mom, like Sadie's mom's bakery to find her and see her. This boy is in love. He's in love and he's love and he doesn't care who knows. But apparently he's not telling anyone. He just does really sweet things and then ruins it or Sadie ruins it or whatever. Sadie hears them arguing and James is essentially like, 
what is something to know i forgot to mention this is on like a math test sadie got 100 and julia's got like an 86 and james is like ripping him apart and saying he failed his math test 86 is a b let's relax and that he's letting himself go because of sadie and then julius is like standing up for her he goes she's smart she's a formidable force she does everything she sets her mind to and nothing can stand her way not even me and then james is like i see the way you look at her you have feelings for her like you need to get it together i don't expect you to be as good as me but like you have high expectations to me and you're gonna let it all go to waste over a girl and then sadie steps in and i we stand sadie this is where her character development takes flight she like stands up to james essentially saying like julius is one of the best students in their year she tells julius to shut up which is like super not what she does she's not confrontational like that so we stand sadie and then she's like basically like talking about how He's really great at everything and the only times he gets beat out by her is because she's simply quote unquote better, which love that for you, Sadie. Love that for you. She stands up for him, it's really cute. And then she's like having this little turmoil, like, oh my gosh, do I like Julius? She reaches out to Abigail and she's like, I might like him. I think about him all the time. Or we're like, finally, finally we're getting somewhere and of course like Sadie's cracking me up her first reaction is I'm gonna be sick when it comes to like I like this boy is this what it's like to like a boy and then oh my gosh it's so sad so she's trying to like be friendly with him and nice to him on the bus to their senior trip and she's like trying to say hi and he's like what and then just walks past her and she's like wow that went horribly that went horribly but then we get a second redemption chance and they're at the like lakeside cabin area or whatever and one of their first activities like canoe racing and they're picking teams and the captains are abigail and julius and abigail's like okay i'm not gonna pick you i'm gonna have julius pick you so that you guys can have some bonding time and you can profess your feelings to him and the first person he picks is Rosie, if you remember Rosie, the girl that asked Sadie for her notes and didn't do it herself. But like, Sadie is a really great athlete and a very clear choice, but anyway. And then he literally goes through all the people and doesn't choose her. And she's completely deflated. Sadie's like, what the heck? And there's like at the first chance of competition, Sadie's like, we're doing one, we're going one on one. You're going down. And essentially, like, they're in their little canoe competition. She's going so fast. He's going so fast. Yes. I look like I'm also a jockey. But also, imagine me paddling. Imagine some paddles here. And then they're going so fast that she accidentally, like, they hit each other and then they, their canoes flip over. And her like canoe floats away and he helps her out and they're like both on the canoe and she's just like so angry because he didn't pick her to be on her team. Such high school drama. And the angst. The angst. And then they get in this like whole like verbal fight about it. And this part just like really tugged at my little heart strings quite a bit. Cause like he essentially calls her out on like being like a people pleaser. She only cares about being perfect. She like literally like is incredibly selfish. And then she goes, you're the worst. You make me sick. You can make me so violently angry sometimes. You're so mean to me. And that's like what she leaves it at. And then she starts crying. And I'm like, this poor girl so disgusted by her own feelings for a crush tries to be friendly tries to be on a team with him i will know i'm very pro sadie so i don't know julius's feelings this is not dual pov but i'm just obviously team sadie obviously they get in a fight and she's like just get us back i will i don't want to be near you and then it leads to 
they're on a campfire, they're watching a movie, she keeps looking at him and then he looks at her and she's like, whatever, I still feel butterflies, but I can care less, screw him. The power ends up going out and it's like flooding and Julissa told a scary story like involved like someone with like drowning because of flooding. So now we'll see he's scared. And then she's ranting to Abigail about how like, she's like so over the feelings. Let me just read you what she said. Okay, sorry, we're not there yet. We find out during all this trauma that, this dramatics that Abigail admits she sent the email. She essentially tried to just send the most recent one that Sadie had drafted to Julius to like show him right. Cause as we talked about before, Abigail feels like she knows a lot about relationships and was trying to help Sadie and had, was going through that with good intentions. The laptop it had issues. She kept hitting send and ended up sending all of them. So, cheers to guessing who it was. But a little kind of like overstepping in my opinion to like invade someone's privacy and send a very sensitive email to someone's like rival. Just me. But then Sadie's, this kind of turns into like Sadie being like, really upset about all of her feelings for Julius. It feels like a poison. And then he walks in during that conversation and he hears it all. And he's like returning a card again. She left at the campfire. It's like this weird politeness and she's just like, get me out of here. So then this is when, sorry, my timeline's a little bit messed up. This is when everything starts flooding. The power goes out and Sadie is like, we need a course of action. So she like starts delegating tasks. She's like, go wake up the counselor. Everyone go grab buckets and containers. And the guy that got the, had that we think wrote the Sadie one is a bitch on the bike storage area way back when was like, seriously, when, even when we leave the school, you're bossing us around. And he goes, you think you're so important, but honestly, we're all sick of you, Sadie. We don't have to do anything you say. And at this point I'm like, bro, the cabins are flooding. Like we, a course of action needs to get taken. Relax. Like, do you want your stuff to get flooded and just to argue about what to do? What? And then Sadie grows a backbone and stands up to him. And she calls him up that you're the one that wrote that mean message about me. He's like, you were the one that sent Julius to punch me and it was confirmed, it was confirmed. We don't condone violence here, folks, but in the fictional world, we'll allow it. So then Sadie's like walking around, trying to navigate these like cabins and whatnot in the dark. She ends up like running to Julius and freaking out because of the ghost stories and everything. And we finally have our, our love, 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 love confession. confession. Finally, finally. And Julius is talking about how Quote, let's start from the top. We're not the complete top, this is what I felt was most interesting. He goes, I can't pretend to care about the things that once interested in me. I can't fall asleep. I play through every look you've ever cast in my direction. I read through your emails over and over until they're carved into my memory. You did this to me. You had to write those awful emails. You had to kiss me, then kick me, then fill my head with your voice. You made it clear, so terribly clear how much you hate me that I'm the last person in the world you would even consider, but I kept looking for signs I would suggest otherwise. I kept wondering if that was still possible because I'm willing to lose everything so as long as I don't lose you. Finally, we got a clear cut love confession. This is the same level of cuteness as Wes's She's Not You to Oh my God, what's her name? To Liz. This book needs to be talked about more. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm literally like swooning. They're so cute. They're so cute. And then, oh, so they like get together finally and Sadie talks through with her mom finally because like one of the biggest reasons Sadie felt that her father left was because she stood up to her father 
in defending her mom and he just like went up and left but sadie finds out that it was kind of leading up to that sadie's mom's like obviously this is not your fault like don't blame divorce and separation on you like you are a child oh my gosh that's a lot to put on a child and then we find out max got potentially recruited by a professional basketball team which was so exciting and they're all together we end on this super sweet note where Sadie <laughs> backed on her emails. Someone still get this girl a diary. I think she could still really benefit from this. In the real world, don't do this, folks. Do not do this. Also, your companies have access to your emails and like anything you chat through. Digital footprints are incredibly trackable, people. Do if you have a phone call or paper that can get burnt or shredded. But it ends with her writing a very sweet message to Julian essentially about how she can experience love and she's excited to do it with him. And something way back when, a very early memory or a very, a very early discussion they had was Sadie accused Julius of being obsessed with her based off of everything he knew about her. And he responds to her email saying, you're right Sadie when I am completely helplessly obsessed with you. Love Julius. It's so cute, you guys. I needed this book. Okay, we're gonna talk about the characters in a second, but let's just talk about how I needed this book. There have been a lot of spooky books out there that have just not been great, but this book brought the same energy as that like cute, young adult, high school, angsty, pining romance. It's so good. Let's talk about the character, de character development, though. I'm just going to focus really on Sadie and Julius for the most part. I love Sadie for growing a backbone. I love Sadie for still being such a, like, kind and passionate person, even though she was accused of being fake. Like, she was still just genuinely trying to make everyone happy. That's, like, what she cared about at the end of the day. Good for her to be that selfless at times. But I'm glad she stood up to others for when she like felt it necessary. I wish her nothing but the best, hoping she gets to Berkeley. I hope she becomes a data analyst like she wants to be. I know she was doing that a lot for like financial stability, but I hope she's happy. Julius, I love so much. Julius, you need to learn to stop being so selfish, sabotaging, my guy. I'm glad you finally professed your feelings, but it was a little bit of a roller coaster, so I really hope he figures that out. He was super cute and super sweet. I thought he was very compatible with Sadie, and they matched each other's vibes very well. Abigail, I was a little bit upset with with the emails, I will note, but I do... <sighs> She's a kid. She's a senior in high school. She was trying to help out her best friend. She felt like she really knew relationships well. She had good intentions i guess definitely i hope she learns from her lesson but i liked her a lot i liked max a lot too i liked sadie's mom a lot and i also didn't mind a lot of the classmates i did mind them when they were taking advantage of sadie though and then lastly the book cover wait let me quickly look at it again i will note i don't really care for people on the covers this is not a real person thank god i love this cover the pastels the like watercolor look it's so pretty it's really pretty i'm a big fan so overall i gave this book five stars i loved it i'm swooning still having the best time i don't know i can't i'm just so happy it, this i feel like the best comparison to me is this the happiness i felt after better than the movies like that same like vibe i'm like oh my gosh so cute i also love academic rivals and lovers and asian pew c mcs let's go well thank you for listening guys i hope you enjoyed this review this was so much fun i love talking about good books don't love talking about bad books actually maybe i could maybe if there's a bad book that you want me to read let me know comment it below maybe i'll do that review because so far my reviews have been very positive Please like this video, it helps me out a lot. Make sure you subscribe so you can support me and turn on the bell icon so you don't miss any videos from yours truly. Follow me on Instagram. I post a lot more of my behind the scenes there and books I'm reading and whatnot. And I think that's it.
comment if you also read this book oh my gosh if you also want to fangirl over this please comment below i will i plan on reading all the other all the books by miss ann liang i'm so i'm literally so excited we're gonna wrap up this video solely because i'm gonna go read some more i'll catch you guys next week though 